Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Natasha aka Wellness Diva Chronicles Keto and I'm back with another video for you guys. Today we are going to be canning bell peppers. The first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and wash our peppers and then we can get them sliced up and set aside for blanching. The USDA home canning guide says that you can go ahead and cut the peppers into four pieces, into quarters, but my jars are pretty small, so I'm going to cut them even finer than that. And I didn't even rinse the peppers. I figured the seeds will just float to the bottom while these are blanching. I'm gonna do tricolor mix, red, yellow, and orange together, and then come on back and do the green separately since I'm gonna can them in that way. Green by himself, and then tricolor assortment together. So I'm gonna let it return to boiling and then blanch them for about three minutes. Once I add my peppers, I let the water come back to a full boil and then let them boil for about two minutes. Jar sitting in the air fryer with it on the reheat setting so that my jars are really hot, peppers are hot, and we're gonna pour hot water into the jars before we put them in the canner and get them sealed up. Okay, let's do a little tri-colored jar first. Just gonna want to get these peppers stuffed in here. And once we've got them nice and packed in. I'm gonna go ahead and get the hot water and pour that into the jar. And then take a little tool and make sure there's no And we're gonna to wanna to leave one inch headspace. So I'm gonna get my funnel. I actually probably should have gotten that first to make it even neater, but between where the food stops and the top of your jar, that's your headspace amount. And we're gonna want one inch. And it is crucial to make sure you read each recipe every time to make sure that you're canning with the right technique, whether, whether it's water bath or pressure canning, and to make sure that you've got the time correct based on the size of your jars. Okay, that is really important. So we're gonna do half pints. So we're gonna be processing pressure canning and processing for 35 minutes. Very hot water. Put 
that filled up. One inch of space left. I get so excited I feel like it's much water. Okay. Go back in and adjust it. Check it. Make sure we're low enough. And then you always want to go in with the fairy vinegar. And just go ahead and clean the jar's rim. Get it off into the canner. And you know what I forgot to do with the last one, but it's okay. But in this one and the rest of them, I do want to add some salt. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some canning salt. And for this mini jar, we're going to go with one quarter teaspoon of salt. I think this can't one third. Can't find my quarter teaspoon right now. Okay, so we'll just repeat the process. Get our peppers into our jar. And again, you want warm jars, warm peppers, hot water to pour into the jars, and hot water in the pressure canner. Very important. that logo and I just like to line up the whack on the top with the lid and the whack on the jar and then just tilt the little lip of the gasket. It's like a two-step locking process. It's like you gotta get it hooked under there, clip clip like that. See what I mean? You guys can see that way. Hook it, clip, clip. Okay. And into the canner she goes. Half pint jars. Beautiful peppers. And it's so amazing. You might think that the color would, would dull down when it's pressure canned, but I feel like they come out even more vibrant. I love to see them on the shelf. 
So again, per the manual that I'm using, the USDA Complete Guide to Home Canning, this is a really good source that everybody should have if you're gonna be canning at home because it'll give you the guidelines for each type of recipe and then not if certain things aren't recommended to be canned. So per the instructions, we're gonna go ahead and set up our pressure canner to run for 35 minutes. So for the Nesco, on the Nesco unit, we just go high, actually first start, stop, high, get our time together. Oop. There we go. Press start and make sure that the valve at the top of the unit is set to exhaust. Then you're gonna notice the canner loading and it's gonna keep loading in that way until it gets to the right amount of pressure and then you're gonna see the unit read E10. And at that point, what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn the pressure knob on the top. We're gonna to turn that to airtight at that point and let it build the appropriate amount of pressure for my altitude, uh, which is 10 pounds. And we're gonna get that, um, it'll go from E10 to E1. When it hits E1, then we're gonna see that the time starts. We'll see that the 35 will come up and it will start to do the countdown and we'll be pressure canning. Right, so now we'll see once the unit has come to a full heat, the necessary heat needed, it'll start off at E10, count all the way down to E1, and then we're gonna see the time come on for this recipe, recipe again, 35 minutes. And we're good to go. There's nothing else to do, the machine does everything. See that? It's not giving, it's not ready yet. I'm gonna give it another 20 minutes to reduce the pressure inside the pressure can. Okay, so I gave it about another 15 minutes or so. And as you can see, it was ready to release and open. You always wanna open this, this hood away from your face. Hot, hot steam. Now be careful. Okay, we can just use our little tool. Actually, what I need to have is a rack. Set these on a cooling rack. But you're gonna wanna let these jars sit overnight before you remove your clasps just to let it get a proper seal. Now you just wanna be patient, let them sit overnight. Don't fuss with them, I know it's hard. They're so cute, they're adorable. You can see them still, see the bubbles still cooking in there? And the combination of how hot it is and just letting it do what it does for suction, it's gonna give the perfect seal. And then tomorrow in the morning, we can go ahead and take off our clasps and get these bad boys on the pantry shelf. Okay, so here we are the following day. And See, we had a failure there. That one did not set up right. Okay, that first lid failed. That first seal failed. You see, when we remove these clasps, we don't have to store the jar with those clasps on. And an indication, because these won't pop like the ball lids will, but an indication that it's sealed is that the lip will be facing downward. And then of course, you should be able to just hold it like this and it should be secure. I don't know, I definitely did go over the lid and the rim with vinegar. I'll probably just add this to dinner tonight. No biggie.
then I said to myself after the second jar did not seal properly, I feel like I must have done something off or maybe I didn't wipe the rim with vinegar well enough. Something to that effect to seal properly and to didn't. So I'm gonna give it another try and just put these back in. If anything, they'll be a little bit more cooked, I guess, because they're gonna have to go through the canning process again. There's, of course, heat involved in that. Let's go back in. Get rid of any air bubbles. Look at the headspace. All right. Add an inch, one inch. Okay, and I've sanitized the glass lids again, along with the rims, the orange rims. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of the hot water. Get these canned up, closed up. Just go over, I really wanna make sure these rims are clean. I may have run into trouble with the ones that did not seal with not getting those orange rings flat enough. I think I have to be really careful about that. Again, just like last time, start high 35. I'll go ahead and post the results of the retake, the redo in the community tab. But I hope you guys do enjoy this and do make some canned peppers for yourselves. And as always, until the next time, my divas, stay safe and be well. Bye bye. <laughs>